Welcome back to Main Event Boxing. This is the Sydney Entertainment Centre. Lucky enough to be joined by the IBF middleweight champion of the world, Daniel Giel. How's life changed in a couple of months? Uh, life's been good. Very busy. Things have got a whole lot busier now, but... Uh... You know, I'm taking everything in my stride and uh, enjoying things. Daniel the Gill, the person, will never change. But when you're the champion, things do change. Young, old, indifferent, everyone wants to throw out a challenge. Yeah, that's it. That's it. They're all they're all coming for me now, and uh, that's what we wanted, though. You know, we, we worked so hard to get the title, and it, it was it was tough getting that title. But we also know now it's going to be even tougher to keep the title. Yeah, getting the title is one thing; keeping it is another. Now, August 31, the date is set on main event boxing. Uh, Irma Soli Albert down there on home soil. Yeah, it's going to be a big fight. This mm. this guy, you know, we're not taking him lightly yep. at all. He, he's a very dangerous guy. A, a lot of the African fighters, you know, they, they're they're fighting hard. Yeah. They're always going to come come to fight. And uh, you know, I'm making sure that I'm in perfect condition again. And mm. uh, you know, Graham, my coach, is is getting me in, mm. in great condition. You know, but I, I just can't wait for it. It's going to be a huge one. You know, I'm going to have a lot of people from from back from yeah. Tassie supporting me for this. We cannot wait. That is August 31, a Wednesday night. The only place you can see it is Fox Sports venues and. And main event TV. Now let's head down into the crowd. Plenty of celebrities here and some of them are with Ben Damon. Yeah, certainly we've got Danny Green's wife in, Nina, and uh, Danny seemed very relaxed when we spent the day with him the other day. You seem very relaxed tonight. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, he's trained hard. He's fitter than I've ever seen him and I just think it's going to be an enjoyable fight and I think he's just quite happy to get in the ring in Sydney. He hasn't fought in Sydney for a while, so I think he's happy just to bring a fight here and, you know, he's as fit as he could be. It was a very memorable light, night last time you were here and last yeah. time uh, Danny went out and fought in the Sydney Entertainment Centre. You'd be hoping for something similar. There's a good atmosphere around tonight? Yeah, definitely. I mean, most people don't want a first-round knockout, but for Greeny, that's what he wants and that's what I want, get him out nice and safe. So, yeah, I'm hoping, I don't know, but I think it will be a long fight and a hard fight. So. Will you be watching through your fingers or you seem like you're ready to watch I'll be, some boxing? I'll be screaming with the rest of them. I'll be probably the loudest. Yeah, no. All right, well, yeah. good luck tonight and good luck okay, to Danny. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, back to you, fellas. There's uh, plenty of celebrities here. We'll have a chat with them through the course of the night. Nina Green there, very relaxed, but she will be the loudest young lady here at the entertainment centre come fight time. How does your family cope uh, once the bell sounds? Um, I, I know my wife. She, she, yeah. yeah, she does get a little bit nervous throughout, and I, I can, I, in, on occasions, I have heard her a few times yelling out a, a few things during a fight. But uh, no, it's, it's all good. Don't argue with Sheena. Never, <laughs> ever argue. Speaking of relax, Danny Green is relaxed down in the dressing room. He has arrived. The comb over is back. A couple of lollies, enjoying, and uh, it's a oh, and some for the cameraman too. It's a, a period a lot of people don't get to see, but when you arrive at the venue and into the dressing room, what are the keys? What is Daniel Gill and Danny Green looking to try and do? For me, it's pretty much keeping as relaxed as possible. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, people everywhere, everybody wants to talk to you, different things like that. It, it's just a matter of keeping as relaxed as, as possible, sitting back, just like Greeny is, and uh, yeah, ha having a bit of a rest, just, just sort of going through in his mind what he's going to do during the fight. How hard is it to try and harness that nervous energy and not start the sweating and the jumping around and using up too much? It can be tough, definitely. It can be very tough to, to hold yourself back a little bit. But, you know, for me, um, a, a lot of people see me before a fight and they think, man, that's yeah. so boring that you don't do much. Like You just sit around and do nothing. But that's pretty much how you have to be to save that energy for those, those 12 rounds. Yep. So many fights won or lost before either man steps into the ring. Speaking of stepping into the ring, two men are about to do so at the cruiserweight limit for the Commonwealth wealth title it is the mountain warrior shane cameron and the dominator dominic vay cameron with the experience 28 fights 26 losses one uh, 26 wins one of two losses to david Tua. let's take a look at the mats that really matter here and three years separates the two slight height advantage to the kiwi a slight reach advantage to the Aussie. Nothing separates on the scales. For the official introduction, let's go centering to Rick. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is for the Commonwealth Cruiserweight title and will be boxed over 12 by three minute rounds. Please now make welcome into our red corner this evening, our Kiwi visitor, Shane Cameron. Yeah. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome into our blue corner, Sydney's very own Dominic V. Official introductions from the land of the long white cloud into our red corner. We welcome a fighter wearing the white shorts with black piping. He's trained by Barry Michael and fights out of the Boxing Alley Gym. Hit in the skulls tonight at 89.9 kilograms. A bronze final medalist at the 2002 Commonwealth Games. He brings to the ring a record that shows 28 fights with 26 wins, including 20 by way of knockout. From Auckland, New Zealand, he's the mountain man, Shane Cameron. His blue corner opponent tonight is a Sydney born and bred local. At the weigh-in, he logged in 90 kilograms as his official fight weight for tonight. Trained by Dylan Nye with 15 fights on his card, winning 13 of those, 10 by way of knockout. He's known as the Dominator. Please welcome Dominic Vey. Your referee in charge will the centering action for this bout, Mr. Charlie Lucas, judges ringside, Gary Dean, Anthony Shipley, and Les Fear. Are you ready for a war on main event boxing? Because I reckon that's just about the perfect description. Fighters being called in to centre ring. OK, boys, I've already spoken to you in the dressing room. You know exactly what I want. Remember, they come to see you fight. They never come to see me referee. 12 rounds, touch them up. Yes. The stare down is the former champ, Kostya Zoo, looks on. Not retired, officially, not yet, anyway. The former number one in the industry. Solomon Hamono in the corner of Dominic Vey. John Hopawadi is here as well. As the two men start work for the night, the end of a 12-week preparation for both boxers and the reward, the Commonwealth Cruiserweight title. Cameron in the white trunks, Dominic Vey in the black trunks. Evenly matched statistically. Most of us will have lasting memories, Daniel, of a, a show put on by your crew at the Grange, old school boxing. Uh, Dominic Vey, Oscar Ciali last year at Penrith. We have not seen a bigger war, I don't think, in a decade of Aussie boxing. Yeah, there was a, it was a massive fight. Both guys uh, you know, threw a lot of punches and landed a lot of punches, but uh, you know, to, the, to their credit, they, they stood up for the whole time, and it was, a, yeah, it was a good, great fight. If we get to the trenches tonight, we know Vey will certainly go there. Two orthodox boxers, very similar in... All stats as you read down from age to height, reach and weight. Two big cruiserweights. 
Two guys that weighed in under that uh, 90.71 or 200 pound limit, but they would walk around, uh, I would reckon, probably at, a, at 100 kilos, every bit of it, and they're probably fighting tonight at 96, 95, 96 kilos. I mean, Cameron has fought a, a fair bit heavier as yeah, well. Yeah, certainly campaigned for most of his career. And the heavyweight division. Decided to come down after that uh, second round loss to David Tua. A huge fight. A massive setback it was for the Mountain Warrior. We saw him in, in this very building, Shane Cameron, going back a few years, a, a devastating eighth round knockout of Aussie Bob Mirovic. Two absolute giants at the time. As Cameron launches there, very much feeling out process a, a lot of the time in the heavier divisions Dan we see one or both boxes come out and looking to throw everything right then right there sometimes you come out and you see the old school feeling out process and that's what we're seeing here yeah that's it and Cameron can bang as well I've, I've you know I had the pleasure of watching him when he was you know still in the amateurs uh, yep. when, I, when I was still in the amateurs as well and uh uh, he, he was a big puncher back then, and uh, you know, he's turned into a great puncher these days. A lot of people expecting a long war here, but if you look at the resumes of both guys, high percentages as far as KOs. So both have got the heavy hands, capable of stopping. Final couple of seconds. Round number one for the Commonwealth Cruiserweight title. Speaking of big boys that can throw them a little bit, well, big Bazza. Barry Hall is here in the crowd. Is there a future as a pugilist for that man once the boots go up for the final time? Any of the boxing guys that have seen big Barry Hall well, throw him say he's a natural. natural. Hey. How you feel? Deep breath, mate. You're all right. Right the body, the jab, and the right the body work the deal. Double it. Go, come back up to the head with the right hand. Right the body, double the right the body, come back with the right the hand. Right the body, right the head. Leave that left hand up. Leave the three up. Nice and tight on the three really good. Right the body, right the hand. 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 Right the body, right the very neat and tidy boxer, Shane. He could be a wild one, a father of Scottish descent, a mother of Maori descent. Uh, an indifferent mix, but a fiery one nonetheless. Good upper body movement there from Dominic Vay. Seems uh, Cameron's taken at the body a little bit. It's uh, a few, few big body punches going down there early, but... How, how dangerous is it changing levels early in a fight, Dan? Up, low. It, it, it can be a bit, bit risky, you know. He, once you, once you got your, your distance set, it, yep. it's not so bad. But when, you, when you're not sure of that distance, you know, not sure how, how long the other guy's big right hand is, or even a big hook, yep. you know, it, it can be risky dropping down. Hands up very high on Dominic Vey, the biggest test of his career, undeniably. Last fought against Oscar Ciali, as we spoke of earlier. That was July last year. There was plenty of time off required after that one. But that was his last fight. I, I just wonder how long 12 months out of the ring, now 30 years of age, is going to hurt Dominic Vey as he is near bully into the neutral corner. Gets out nicely and gets out well, though. Look at the cruiserweight division in Australia. Danny Green, Brad Pitt, Peter Cronier, Anthony McCracken, Adam Forsyth, Daniel Amman, Moston Neiman, Kane Watts, Kerry Foley, Jamie Bogovich, Dominic Vey. There are a heap. What a competitive division. It's very much like your middleweight division on a, on a global scale. Just so many quality athletes. I mean, here in Australia, there's... You know, Solomon, Wood, Mundine, yourself, you go overseas, Sergio Martinez, Felix Sturm, Dimitri Pirog, Andy Lee, Chavez Jr. 
they are everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong, but it's good to see in, in Australia, like so, so many guys around the same way that are all so yep. good. It bodes for some uh, interesting matchups over the course of the next 18 months in the cruiserweight division in Australia and the middleweight division. Of course, that will be highlighted Wednesday, August 31, when the real deal defends, in my opinion, the belt in world boxing, the IBF middleweight title. Jeez, he's nice and relaxed, Shane Cameron here. The hands are down. He's trying to loosen up the shoulders. Playing a few games, a few games early on. You're boxing against a guy, 13 wins, 10 knockouts. I don't know if hands by the side is <laughs> ideal because Dominic can bang. Oh, Vay walks into a good right hand. Did not as even buckle his knees. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from round number two. Bay walks into a, a good right hand late in the round, but throwing the more punches was the man they call the Mountain Warrior. I think it could be smart tactics as well, going to the body early. Yep. Might, might make a bit of a difference a little bit later. Right for it, boys. Step back, step back, right for it. <laughs> Round number three coming your way live around the world on main event boxing tonight. We're going to the US, going to Russia, over to our great friends in New Zealand watching this. A big Aussie hello. I hope you guys are doing well and enjoying your night. Not at all, boys. Work out of it. Dominic Vey, centre ring, the champion, the Commonwealth champion with a victory over Kiwi Oscar Siali. Took a few shots in that round number two just previous. Going to jump in the trenches though. Like to see Dominic Vady, your right shoulder, because he'll stay there with you all night long. Yeah, I think he's got a bit of confidence off. He's holding back a little bit. Jane Cameron throwing the better punches and a, and a big performance tonight, an impressive performance tonight is key for Shane Cameron. They have designs on Danny Green. They have designs on the IBO Cruiserweight title. And unless Shane Cameron wins and wins impressively, they might well again be forced to wait in the queue. Single shot there from Vay. Made his debut back in November of 05. The Fox Sports card. Downtown Blacktown, weighing in as a heavyweight at 101 kilos. 90 kilos tonight, some six years on. Going to the body. We saw just how effective body shots could be in the opening fight of the night with Michael O'Donnell going down to South African Peter Cronier for a beautiful body shot to the rib. As they gets a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum. Roughly double the experience of in-ring professional time for Shane Cameron in his 159th professional round here as Dominic Vey opens up from the ropes. Cameron calls him on and it's getting a little warmer here at the Sydney Entertainment Centre as a result. Cameron strikes back. You just have that feeling about this one. In yeah. for a beauty. So many face seems to uh, seems to enjoy getting hit. He, he seems to get his confidence from getting hit. Some guys are like that. They're not only counter punches, but 
they get confidence from knowing that they've taken a shot and can jump onto their toes. Stay outside. Calculated you're coming in and out. That's all you have to do on rush things. Cameron going to the body there. Make sure you've done your sit-up work for Dominic Bay. Little short right hand from Bay, trying to create space here and did so nicely. Started short punching Dan and then was able just to widen up a little. Yeah, that was smart. That was smart because Cameron was leaning in a fair bit too. Yep. You understand that. Okay? Don't stand there and try to mix it with him. That's exactly what he wants you to do. Okay? Round number four coming your way. Hope you're enjoying the action. Both guys with a high percentage of their knockouts in the first five rounds. Bay again from his back foot. Starts with that short little right hand. It's almost like putting the small drill bit and the power tool and just popping it out very quickly. Slowly gets bigger and winds up a little more and the impact is greater. He gets out of trouble and does so by punching his way out. Cameron centre ring in the white trunks. 33 years of age. Lives in Auckland, New Zealand. Left hand still just a little low. There's an opportunity for Dominic Vey with a straight right hand. Cameron misses with that lead jab. Vey can get the feet right. There's a, an opportunity. Both guys boxing well, Dan, but when it comes back to it, these two guys are genuine fighters. And is it true the, the longer the fight goes, the more fatigue sets in, the more you sort of go back to your natural instinct despite what you've trained? Definitely, definitely is true. I mean, these guys put, put plenty, of, plenty of hours of training into this. So, I mean, they're, they're going to be prepared. They know, both, both of these guys know that the other one's pretty tough and uh, you know, he's going to be there to the end. Especially Dominic Vey, everybody knows that he's pretty much going to be there to the end, so you got to be fit. That you do. It's something special seeing uh, elite athletes in these heavier divisions go sparring and go training. It is vicious, it is brutal, it is fast, it is powerful, all of the above. And that's just training. Watching any boxer do his thing in the gym is something quite special a lot of the sparring sessions in the gym tend to be uh, just as good yeah. if not better at times than some of the fires now for the general public to go along and watch a, a, a spa most of the time gyms like yours at, at, at the grange up out there in southwest sydney general public are allowed into the gym to train and to see you guys train and it's a wonderful facility out there it's you know it's not just we're the professionals and we lock the door. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, yeah, I, I do coach a, a, a group of young amateur guys, take them around New South Wales to fight. You know, we, we do a, a lot of, yeah, other boxing training. Last couple of seconds of the round as the boys open up a little. I don't think either guy wants to throw too much too early because they both realise... It could be 36 minutes before their night of work is complete. As soon as he comes to you, move away and use your jab, mate. When you're on the attack, throw your punch. As soon as he attacks back, move, move. And use your left hand. Get side on and stick that jab in his face. You have to use your back foot, champ. You see your, jab, your back foot stuck there. Yeah. You know, yeah. move the back foot. Look at those long punches you did in the end of the what round. On the head, what on the head? Hold on. You're going really good. You're going well, mate. You can. You're going really good, Mush. Yeah. Well, 
The fight continues, as does the crowd filing through the doors here at the Sydney Entertainment Centre. The bottom tier, all but full, so to the ground. And in action at the moment, Shane Cameron, Dominic Vey for the Cruiserweight title. It is Cameron in the white, Vey, the champion in the black. 29th pro fight for Shane Cameron, 26 wins, 20 via knockout. Half a minute into round number five. Oh, Vey with the straight punches, but it was a good left. Around the corner from the Kiwi. Now the guy's been hard to find, have they? They're both sort of front and centre. That's it. They could do it in a phone box if they needed to. <laughs> Doubling up the left hand, Vey. That short punching seems to be where Dominic has an advantage, getting called on by the Kiwi. It's rock back. We know Cameron's got that late fight punching power. Going back to that eighth round knockout of Bobby Mirovic. Seventh round knockout of Jonathan Hagler. And there's that left, just pushing it out, doubling it up. Setting things up very well with that jab. That's where it all comes from, isn't it, Daniel? That's the, right. The, the body shots and the, the big power punches, they look great. And they're damaging, but it all starts with the first thing you you probably learnt when you stepped into a gym, the left jab. That's it. A lot of it doesn't land unless you use the jab to start things off. Changing levels there, Cameron. Exactly what Dan Gill said earlier. Difficult to do at the start of a fight, but as you get a little bit more confident and you establish your range and your rhythm, you are able to change levels. Again, Cameron going down low, starting high. And what it does as well, it, it later on in the fight, it, it gets the guy's arms to drop a little bit. As soon as the arms start to drop, you can go over the top. The Vey supporters making a little noise here in the final minute of round number five. Like what they saw with a combination. Three ringside judges for this, Gary Dean, Anthony Shipley and Les Fear. Oh, Vey walks into a couple. Good shots from Cameron, who again changed levels. Digging in. Brains out of the boxing alley in Auckland, New Zealand. Clive, Cleve Langdon and Kenny Rensfeld. Also Barry Michael, a former world champion, in that man's corner. And a little bit of claret over the left eye of Shane Cameron. I think he's cut in a reasonably dangerous position. Antonio Tava, the magic man, is in the house. Relaxed, cool as the other side of your pillow. And heading to his dressing room, past the Danny Green dressing room. You won't hear a lot of noise coming out of Team Green Machine. They are focused. Not this one, not this one. Not this one, that's Danny's one. Go ahead, go ahead. Next one, next one, make a right. Antonio will get changed in the broom club closet if he has to. He doesn't seem to care. <laughs> nice and relaxed. <laughs> Bell Sounds, round number six for the Commonwealth Cruiserweight title. 15 minutes of action so far. And uh, a feeling out process it has been. Both guys with the knockout power, massive tickers and good chins. Doubling up that left hand, he's got nice skills for a big man, Shane Cameron. Straight right hand from Dominic Vey through and a left hand again. He's trying to break down the Mountain Warrior here. You fire off jabs at the same time. Whoever's got the longer reach normally wins that. That's 
There hasn't been that one big shot yet, Dan, that has forced one of the two guys to say, OK, well, I'm gonna, if I'm going to throw punches, I'm not going to stand here any longer. Just waiting for that one telling shot. It's, it's probably, probably smart tactics from Cameron, too, because they, they know, you know Dominic Vey can take a, a massive shot. So you know, the more punches you can land is probably the, the better thing, rather than going for that big one punch. OK, break. 90 okay. seconds down, 90 seconds remain, round number six. Our referee here, Charlie Lucas, hasn't had a great deal to do. The boys haven't been tangled, haven't been naughty, haven't been dirty. Fought in great spirit. Gee, it's been busy for big boys, hasn't it, too? Yeah, plenty of punches. It's good to see. Shows the depth in the, the cruiserweights in Australia. Yeah. Last out, Shane Cameron went the distance all 12 rounds with Anthony McCracken on the Danny Green. BJ Flores undercard. That was November, and here we go. Opening up a little. Cameron strikes a few times, and Vey responds in kind with his best flurry of the night. Now, this is a little more of what we were expecting. Rocking the head back there of Vay, that stiff lead jab. Shane Cameron, whose head gets rocked himself. Out of that, boys. Work out of it. So there'll be a couple of big shots going out now. And after 18 minutes, both guys are going to go back to their corner and think, well, that wasn't too bad. Six rounds down, but I'm not looking forward to the next <laughs> six. <laughs> to the body, Cameron. Break, step back, don't punch. Step back, let him go. Step back, don't punch. Okay, box. Corner. No chance to re-engage as the bell sounds. This is where corner work absolutely crucial as fatigue is set in. Antonio Tarver in the building. Ben Damon caught up with him. Antonio, not long now, mate, before you get in the ring and fight Danny Green. How are you feeling? I'm feeling real good, you know, uh, confident. Uh, we put in the work, and now we just got to go out and execute, you know. Um, just try to stay, you know, sharp and relaxed and let them go. You've been saying through the uh, preparation for this fight that they've got the wrong man here. Do you think they've underestimated you? I wouldn't say underestimated, but, you know, uh, I don't think they uh, prepare for what's going to happen tonight. I feel real good. I'm going to let my hands go. I'm going to be busy in there, and uh, I'm just going to fight my fight, you know. I'm not going to worry about anything, and at the end of the day, you know, uh, I'm going to say that I did everything I, I said I was going to do. And we should expect some magic from the Magic Man? Most definitely. Yeah, I feel uh, a major trick coming on tonight. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Wow. We get to speak to multi-time world champion. An hour before, he steps into the ring to challenge for his fifth world title. Shane Cameron, Dominic Vey are doing it for the Commonwealth Cruiserweight title. Cameron in the white is the challenger. Vey in the black is the champion. And business certainly picked up in round number six. This is the second half of the fight. It actually seems like a long time to all rounds, but when you're in there, it does go very fast. Oh, good right hand from Cameron, who was after that cruiserweight knockout that he believes he still possesses after so many great KOs in the heavyweight division. Fighting from the ropes and his heels, Dominic Vey again, nicely turned and got out of there. Strikes quickly in that. Right hand down of Shane Cameron is allowing the left hand of Dominic Vey a little bit of a direct route to the target zone. Okay. Cameron's mouth is busted up, blood flowing from that. Nicely turned from Vey. Walks into one there. Both fire off the left at the same time. Cameron marked up under the left eye now. The sign that Dominic's right's finding the target. Are you noticing things like that during a fight? Where and how and how badly your opponent's marked up? 
Yeah, definitely. It's almost a subconscious thing, though. Yep. Um, I don't really, you don't really actually, you don't have enough time to think about those, no. those little things, but you are noticing all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, you notice when you, you're just about to get in my tail. Oh, fire. Oh. Hurt by the body shot. Look at these from Shane Cameron. Vegas walks in, pushes him off. Oh. If you haven't been to a fight, you've got to get ringside because these shots are echoing around the Sydney Entertainment Centre. In fact, surrounding suburbs are on high alert as well. They are big body shots and they hurt. I'm sitting right in front of them and uh, I'll tell you what, I can feel them. That old boys. Out of that. Working from the inside. Vey with that snap back in his hands. To the corners we go. Seven rounds down, five rounds remaining. Plenty of industry folk sitting ringside here. A couple of national champions in the crowd. Shannon Taylor and Mark Pajero. That's the brawn. We'd rather focus on the beauty. Here on Main Event Boxing, the lovely Lauren Eagle. Here enjoying the action. Big Bobby Mirovic in the house, the three-time national champion. Ah, oh, still got it, Bear, still got it. Really Round number eight coming your way live on Main Event Boxing up next. Uh, for Ben Rabar, Isaac Lachwayo for the vacant IBF Australasian welterweight title. And then the main event, Antonio Tava, Danny Green. IBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World. I want those bottles off there. Sitting with the IBF middleweight champ, Daniel Gill, in commentary with us. Former IBF champ Barry Michael was filling the seat earlier, but is in the corner now with on, boys. Work out of it. Shane Cameron in the white trunks here. Oh, Vay throwing more punches, throwing better punches, and scoring Dominic. Good way to start round number eight. I think Vay needs to start picking up his points too, and I, I think that's what his corner must have said. Daniel, win, lose, or draw, are you conscious throughout the fight and when you get back to the corner of how you realistically think you're doing on the judges' scorecards, or when you get back to the corner, do you always think you're winning? <laughs> no, you, you know, you know, deep down, you know, uh, yeah, yeah how, how well you're going. You know, if you land more punches than, than you're taking, and. Uh, and by the end of the fight, you've got a you've got a fair idea. Great boys, step back. Keep the three on the top. Keep the three up, three up, three up. There, that's it. One hand up, one after that. Cameron going in, but not going in with, I guess the the commitment to that combination that they'd like to see out of the red corner. Look at the stance here of Vay. This is eight rounds in, and the hands are high. The chin is down. Legs nice. Walking into a few here, but taking most on the shoulder, on the forearms, on the hands. Final minute, round number eight. Twelve months out of the ring for Dominic Vay. Former Danny Green sparring partner. One of Dominic's broken noses, courtesy of the green machine. Great. Step back, don't punch. Okay, Bob. Crunching to the body again. Against the ropes. And this is where, again, Vay with his short punches, and he's got Cameron in a bit of trouble here. Push back, Shane Cameron. Can Dominic Vay with 17 seconds remaining in the round 
Rock the big Kiwi again. We're going to the stools at the end of eight. Hello, boys. Work out of it. Oh, St. Cameron, he is cut up and bashed up over that left eye. And under, as a matter of fact. Beautiful, beautiful work on that, mate. That's it. We're going to have to dig deep in, mate. This is what champions are made of, OK? You're going to be, you're going to show them what a superstar we are now, OK? We're going to start letting the hands go nice and relaxed, and we're going to find simple one-twos, OK? Simple one-twos. But while you're setting them up, really, really keep that headshot so you don't get caught with anything, OK? Because a few times there, we get a bit too sloppy. I don't want to get Let's take a look at some of the highlights from... Round number eight. Gee, Faye's good with those short punches and getting himself out of trouble, isn't he? Yeah, he's definitely getting hit by the, the bigger, clearer punches, but those, those little inside shots, they definitely hurt Cameron. <laughs> People at home will be saying, OK, well, Dominic Faye punching short and from the ropes. That's when he's been at his most effective, so why isn't he punching short the whole fight? Why, why wouldn't that be the case? Uh, the big reason would be... Uh, yeah, Shane Cameron probably doesn't want him there. Yep. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's a lot easier just to move the feet, try and keep away, and I, I think that's probably a smart tactic if Cameron does that. Someone in face should be getting in his face. And trying, trying to stay about that distance there. Yeah. yeah. Bay's actually trying to bring Cameron onto his punches. He's not marching forward, just try and get him as Cameron comes in. Oh, and that rock, the champion. Oh, another big right hand from Shane Cameron. Oh, these boys are going to wake up with some bruises tomorrow. Both men have been tagged. Some of the body shots. The Shane Cameron has hit Dominic Bay with absolutely brutal. Cameron with a little stumble there. I won the bottle off the open of the ring. It's for a Commonwealth title, Vey is the champion. Does Cameron have to beat the champion? As the, the old cliche goes, you've got to take the title from the champion. Seems to be doing a great job, though. He's sort of taking the fight yep. to Vey. Yep, I has, agree. Yeah, has to be very careful, though, especially in this situation. Halfway through round number nine, en route to our main event here tonight for the IBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Trans Tasman battle, so many great rivalries between Australia and New Zealand. And when it's a sporting rivalry, they don't like us, we don't like them, but best of friends at any other time. You don't want to mess with the Australasians. Faye pushed back into the corner here. Good muscle shown by Shane Cameron. Didn't go ahead with it. Didn't bully him all the way to the ropes because that's when Faye has been at his strongest. See, Dominic Faye is showing a whole heap here. Just his 16th pro fight. He has only fought 88 rounds. If we go to the judges' scorecard tonight, the last fight, the last round in this fight will be his 100th round. That is still, in many people's books, very much a novice in a professional sport. He's shown a lot of composure for that, that's for sure. Push back into the corner here. Bay gets rocked. Last 10 seconds of round number nine. Dominic can't afford to be separated by the referee when they get in close. He needs to be the one working his way out. Yeah, to be honest, I think, I think he's waiting just that little bit yep. too long. Okay, we're just going to have to throw more punches there. Don't worry about the bombs there, okay? You're having a hard time. Saki Obika in the crowd tonight. Enjoying his time here. Ah, the boys talking him up to confidence isn't a problem for the Scorpion. Nice Just walk up to him, nice and tight. Okay, walk up to him and then get your wind back, get your breath back, and you will find the best way going here. Taking a look at uh, the highlights from round number nine. 
Well, another Shane Cameron round. There were some big shots there. Look at the short little left. Bay keeping the guard high and keeping his punches shorter and straighter. The eyes have swollen on both. The noses, I was going to say bent, maybe a little benter than what they were coming in. Give us a look at your beak. Perfect. Oh, no, there's a, a little bend there. A little bit. I don't think you're allowed to hold it legitimate world title if, if the <laughs> nose is straight. <laughs> Work out of it, boys. Don't hold. Bay in the middle of the ring. Throwing and then receiving a nice short uppercut there from Cameron. Over the top, Dominic again. A lot of enthusiasm from the blue corner. Liking what they're seeing. They again short. Short, sharp, hurtful. And this is the story, enjoys it. You want a war? They'll give you a war. Both men, massive tickets. Olivier walks into a good left hook there, then fires a few away onto Cameron and the target zone. Nice one from Dominic Vay, who is going head hunting at the moment, the dominator. Shane Cameron, a standing target, because here goes Dominic Vay. After 29 minutes, the two of them are standing toe to toe. They are going blow for blow. Look at this from the Aussie. How much more can Shane Cameron take? Oh, Cameron fights back a big right hand of his own. Both guys have forgotten defence and are just going all-out attack. What a great round. Oh, 15 seconds remaining. The corner work here is going to be crucial as Vay opens up one more time to finish the round in complete domination of Shane Cameron. This has been a Dominic Vay round. Whoa! But mate, when you're doing that work, that was absolutely brilliant, okay? Absolutely brilliant. But after you've done the work, you can back off and have a rest, okay? We uh, definitely know what Dominic Vay's going to do the next round. Breathe out and hold it. And then breathe in. Get it round 10, Daniel, what'd you like? Mate, the, the, the punches. Man, I do. You, that, that's what he should have been doing a little bit earlier. He should have been taking it up to Cameron a little bit earlier, forcing that distance, getting at a shorter distance. And uh, man, even though he's copping a couple, he's still landing those big shots. He'll take one or two to land 10 or 11. <laughs> Dominic Vay was standing centre ring, almost launched himself into the Cameron corner. You ready for six minutes of brutality? This deserves to go to the scorecards. But can Shane Cameron survive? One more big shot. Well, let's see the Mountain Warrior out. You get the feeling Vay and his team have set a game plan and followed it. They thought Cameron was vulnerable late. Great, boys. Box. Oh. This is tough. Mix 
can't say those body shots earlier took, took much of a toll. I mean, Vay still coming on strong, very strong. Because that was a sustained attack, wasn't it, from Shane Cameron for a couple of rounds. He just kept ripping and chopping as he does there, and we thought eventually this is going to this is going to tell. <laughs> Most people, their arms do drop, but yeah, Dominic Vay is a tough guy. Cameron catching there with a left hand. Good solid left jab, Shane Cameron. Not the quickest, not the longest, not the the strongest, but it's a, a very nice weapon that he possesses. And our boys. Should Cameron be keeping this on the outside, Dan? I, I think it would be smarter. Be smarter to move the feet a little bit more. But I guess he, would, he doesn't want to give him too much room as well. But, uh, <laughs> Six one way, half a dozen the other, I guess. Yep. Oh, it's easy from this side of the ropes. Oh, they walked into a couple there now. The Kiwi. With some optimism for the round. 60 seconds remaining. Ace question over the last three minutes as Dominic Vay punched himself out as he stumbles from a right hand. This is Shane Cameron with a 75% knockout record in the heavyweight division, down at cruiserweight and throwing absolutely everything at one of Australia's finest. Is when he's at his best and Cameron he responds it has been back and forth Great boys, step back. Okay. for 33 minutes but you just have a feeling that the final three minutes in this war may be the best yet we are preparing to go back to the corners for the final time Dominic Bay Shane Cameron up next. It is now for Ben Rabar and Isaac Latchway over three minutes of sheer brutality coming your way on main event boxing. Got him some nice shots there. Suck it in deep, mate. Yeah, suck it up. Deep. Come on. Deep. Deep. Really, really deep, Shane. Really deep. Come on, you need this last round. Deep. Shane. Deep. Last last round. Round. Yeah, Shane, please. Breathe deep. Get some air in your lungs. Come on, suck it up. Let him breathe. Come on. Grab that towel. Shane. Yeah. Phrase of the night is suck it up because both corners saying just that to their charges. If you're enjoying wherever you're watching main event boxing bringing you a battle for the commonwealth cruiserweight title shane cameron in white the challenger dominic vey in the black the champion and the crowd very much live in attendance buying into this one head of cameron rocked but it's not the left hand that's been doing the damage it's those combination punches from dominic vey Oh, Cameron, creating a bit of room for himself. Cameron's better from the outside, Vay's better from the inside. Yeah, Vay's, Vay's trying to still suck him in, trying to let him come forward. They stay styles, make fights. Two different styles, what we're seeing here. This is where Dominic wants it, where he can start at close range. This is not where Shane wants it. Head gets rocked back from the champion again. At right hand, and now Cameron standing there unwillingly, just accepting combination punches from the man in black. Beauty of the last round is uh, you got that much adrenaline pumping through your body. A lot of the time, you don't even feel these punches. Oh. from the corner 
That's about caring for your fighter. Dominic Vey, congratulations. Shane Cameron, congratulations. And a congratulations to the corner because Dominic was hurt and hurt bad. Yeah, he was very hurt. That's a great stoppage. Jansen it is in the corner with um, with Dominic Vane and it was his call with the towel Solomon Amono was there as well but to the men in this corner they were fighting from the outside there's nothing worse than a brave cornerman that is happy to let the fighter get injured but Dominic he was out on his feet from that punch he was absolutely out If you hadn't seen it, you wouldn't believe it. Look at this first shot, and Dominic is asleep there. One more time. Shane Cameron knew straight away. The crowd knew straight away. Let's make it official. Let's go center ring to Rick Powell. Thank you, Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, what about this evening? Please put your hands together. An incredible bout this evening. As Charlie Lucas calls our fighters to center ring. Ladies and gentlemen, in one minute and 39 seconds of round number 12, the blue corner throwing the towel in, your new winner and new Commonwealth champion, give it up for Shane Cameron. Shane, congratulations. What a war we saw. We expected a great fight, but that was something incredible. Yeah, that was, that was incredible. Actually, yeah, I was in there facing it all, and I must say, Dominic Vey, uh, credit to the man. He, uh, I knew he was going to come tough, but I didn't realise he was going to come that tough, so uh, he made it hard for me. I started good, and then in the middle of the rounds, he started pinching some, so I, needed, I knew I needed to come on strong later on in the rounds to, uh, to take the fight, and then you know, I've been going for that shot all night, which uh, I caught him. Lucky I caught him late in the, late in the 12th round. Barry Michael said before the fight that you've got a right hand now for the first time in a while. The nuts and bolts have been taken out of it. It certainly came in handy. Yeah, it did, it did. And I'll tell you what, it's feeling it. It's feeling it right now. But I'd like to thank my team, um, Kenny Rainsville, has done so much work for me. Henry, I'd like to thank Barry. Henry, you've been working so hard for me for this fight to try and, you know, bring, some, bring, some, uh, bring something different to back to the picture for me. And uh, it was a good start, but there's more to come. And tr traditionally, this is the, about the time that you call out Danny Green, and we're going to hear it again tonight. Yeah, well, I'm definitely, I'm definitely supporting the man, the, the, the machine. I need him to win. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Hey, do you want to see me fight Danny Green? Hey, let's go. That'll be a war. That'll be a war, me and Danny Green, and uh, that's what I want. And um, I'll be 100% putting the, the, the green machine tonight. Congratulations to Shane Cameron. Congratulations to both of our fighters. What a war we've seen here tonight.